Welcome to the Daybreak with Jeff Slakey podcast. I'm so happy you found us. Please subscribe, rate, review, and share this with your circle of influence. It's a collection of the interviews, news, and conversation during Daybreak with Jeff Slakey on iFiber One News Radio, KMAS, weekdays from 6 to 9. Well, it's Thursday, the 17th day of September, and a good morning to you and Spencer. Good morning to you. How you doing? I'm doing all right now with coffee in hand. Good morning. Yeah, buddy. I'm hopeful, and I think you have some of the same reporting, but by noon this afternoon, maybe the skies will be clearer than they have been. Yes, it looks like things are improving here, thankfully, going into the uh, getting ready for the weekend. Still unhealthy, but... When you go from hazardous, you know, it's all kind of relative. We were hazardous, which is the worst, and then very unhealthy, and now it's down into the 170s this hour in Shelton anyway, which a few days ago was 300 and something. Wow. I mean, it has just been, it's hard. You know, we've been uh, indoors because of the virus, but have had some respite over the months to go out at least and walk outside, and now for the last week or two, you know, we haven't even been able to do that. Uh, it definitely, from what I'm hearing all around the area, from people I talk to, um, a lot of folks are, they're about done. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's see. Moving on since our last report. Oh, on the show today, City Manager Jeff Knighton for our focus on Shelton presented by our Community Credit Union. And continuing on that, Mason Health Conversations for Bikers for Babies seems like this weekend could be Uh, A good opportunity to get out there if you haven't jumped on the hog in a few weeks and and a great fundraiser, too, for Mason Health. We'll talk more about that. Since our last report here on the show, Mason County Public Health notified of five additional Mason County residents testing positive for COVID-19. Total now is 384 since the virus began in March. Mason County staff performing case investigations and contact tracing to help reduce the spread here in our community. Firefighters battling the West Coast wildfires say this year's blazes are some of the worst that they have ever seen. They say the fires are taxing the human, mechanical, and financial resources of the nation's wildfire fighting forces to an extraordinary degree. And the half of uh, the fire season is yet to come, which is hard to believe. Heat, drought, and a strategic decision to attack the flames early have combined with the coronavirus to put a historically heavy burden on fire teams. Justin Silvera is a battalion chief with California State Firefighting Agency and says new fires break out before existing ones are contained. And then up in Skagit County, we're hearing that they have uh, been providing some 2,000 N95 masks for the agricultural workers up there amid this. Of course, the thick smoke continues to make that air quality unhealthy. The Skagit Valley Herald reports that the smoke is up there and farmers were already required to wear masks due to the pandemic, but cloth masks that we have become uh, used to wearing do very little to protect from wildfire pollutants. You have to have those N95 masks. So they have been um, passing those out up there for the agricultural workers who are working out in the fields. That makes sense. That's great. It's got to be unbearable uh, for them like it is for for most people out there, this is just mm-hmm. really bad. Mm-hmm. Democratic Governor Jay Inslee and Republican challenger Lauren Culp have agreed to a televised debate. It'll be on October the 7th. The Seattle Times reports the debate will be broadcast live from 8 to 9 p.m. Just after that evening's vice presidential debate, according to the Washington State Debate Coalition, the candidates will participate in the debate from separate rooms at the Olympia headquarters of the state's government affairs channel, uh, TVW. Debate Coalition spokesperson Lincoln Vanderveen says it will be broadcast statewide by major Washington TV stations. And additionally, here on the radio, we will be airing the presidential debates and that vice presidential debate that you were talking about. Shellfish managers, of course, scheduling big time razor clam digs through the end of the year. State shellfish managers have approved. Yesterday was the opening day. Today, it is a 658 Low tide tomorrow, it's a 739 low tide. Uh, Long Beach Twin Harbors Mock Rocks today. Long Beach Twin Harbors Capelas tomorrow. So uh, once that smoke clears, this might be another great opportunity to get out, get some fresh air, stretch those legs. Oh, absolutely. And each time I say I'm going to do it, I haven't done it yet, but I, I want to 
do this with at least a couple of the kids I know will want to do it with me. Okay, maybe one maybe days. one of the kids. One of these days. Each year, the chamber proudly presents. The- <laughs> it's got to be one of those things. I On my deathbed, I can't say I didn't go razor clam digging. I'll regret it into eternity. Uh, each year, the chamber proudly presents its annual awards, and nominations are now open until the end of the month at 5 p.m., these aim to recognize the businesses and individuals in recognition of their accomplishments during the calendar year. The community is invited to make nominations for the following five categories. Business of the Year, Rookie of the Year, Boss of the Year, Citizen of the Year, Community Supporter of the Year. And the website is masonchamber.com. Again, today on the show, City Manager Jeff Knighton for our Focus on Shelton, presented by Our Community Credit Union. Also, more conversations about Bikers for Babies, which is coming up a big fundraiser for Mason General Hospital and the Foundation. It's all here on Daybreak. Good morning to you. From the iFiber One News Radio Studios, you're listening to Daybreak. Again, good morning to you. Thursday here, checking in on local sports on a game heard here yesterday. Brandon Belt, Brandon Crawford, and Evan Longoria homered for San Francisco. And the visiting Giants, playing at home, beat the Mariners 9-3 to in a game moved by the Bay because of smoky, dangerous air here in western Washington. Donovan Solano and Mauricio Dubon hit early RBI singles as the Giants snapped a three-game losing streak with a road victory at Oracle Park. Pete Carroll saw what happens in the season opener as New England put the ball in the hands of new QB Cam Newton and he ran all over the Miami Dolphins. It left the Hawks coach wondering whether Newton is back to being a dynamic runner and Seattle should plan for another 15 carries or if that was just a one-time thing. Seattle's long history with Newton will add another chapter Sunday when the Patriots visit the Seahawks. Newton played Seattle eight times with the Panthers and now faces the Hawks for his first road game with the Patriots right here on the radio, AM 1030 and FM 1033 this Sunday night. It's a 3 o'clock pregame and 520 kickoff. Here on your home for the Hawks, I fiber one pac 12 took a significant step forward in joining the big 10 and playing football in the fall, getting clearance to hold full fledged practices in the states of California and Oregon big 10 grabbing headlines by changing course and agreeing to set an eight game football schedule that would start the weekend of October 24th. The pac 12 is also reconsidering starting its football season this fall, but more obstacles need to be cleared before that happens. Half of its schools are handcuffed by state level COVID restrictions. pac 12 commission, Larry Scott announced a breakthrough with California and Oregon that was helped along by the conference's plans to soon begin testing athletes daily for the virus. If we get word that the Cougs will start in on this as well, if Washington gets the go ahead, we'll bring you Cougar football here on the radio as best we can. Otherwise, we're going to have some special programming uh, starting later in the month when it comes to Cougar News. It's going to be a two-hour Cougar sports show followed by a three-hour kind of around-the-country red zone, if you will, look at what's going on in collegiate football. That's right here on the radio, AM 1030 and FM 1033. Again, good Thursday morning to you. More Daybreak coming up. You're listening to Daybreak on iFiber One News Radio. And good morning, everybody. Jeff Slakey and Spencer Hughes here on the Daybreak Show as it's time now to focus on Shelton, presented by our great friends at our community credit union. City Manager Jeff Knighton here with me this morning. Morning, Jeff. Good morning, Jeff. Good to talk with you. And uh, last week, was it last week, two weeks ago or so, you did the uh, State of the Community. Yes. uh, As a a kind of a four-part series that the chambers are putting together. And it was uh, fascinating to listen to all the the folks talking. And you were speaking about some uh, technological updates upgrades that are coming to the city. Let's uh, talk about that. Yeah, uh, the mayor and I uh, presented the uh, State of the Community Address. It was, uh, it was a good time. It was a good way to get information out to the people in the community. Lots of things we want to do. Uh, but a couple of the major points I wanted to hit. Um, permitting. Uh, right now, everything pretty much that we have is on paper. Uh, we're going to transition to an online permitting platform in the cloud to make it more uh, robust for everybody, uh, easier to submit your permits, easier to review your permits and get them done so we can hit the timelines that we're expected to hit uh, and provide certainty for those people that want to invest in Shelton. What kind of time 
savings do you think you can realize by having this stuff online? I think uh, on average, I think we can cut probably one or two weeks off the process. Wow. Uh, that is, it's much easier because you submit a permit. Uh, we can take a look at it and see if there's anything that's missing. Review it all online. And when it's done, you get an email. You don't have to wait for a phone call. You don't have to wait for anything else. It's just right there and ready to go. And you can see the process. Any comments that our building official makes on your plans, anything like that, uh, you can see them immediately. So there's no there's a, a, a lot of uh, time there that we can make up for the community and for, quite frankly, uh, us on the inside, uh, inside of City Hall. We can make it uh, more efficient for us so we can use the uh, resources that we have as wisely as possible. Wow, that's awesome. That is a, that's a huge uh, uh, potential time saver. We, we like to have uh, a four-week maximum with an average of three weeks for houses. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're talking about a commercial building, of course, it's going to be a little bit longer, but that's the target we want to hit. The other thing I heard you talking about was uh, 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 changing out some of the ways that the water is being read. We have uh, right now we have brass meters that were the standard uh, all the way up until about the mid 90s, maybe early 2000s. And what we'd like to go to is called a census meter. It's uh, uh, S E N U S, I believe is how it's uh, spelled. But it's a magnetic meter that uh, transfers the information immediately back to the city. So if you have a leak or you get a huge water bill, I know some people experience that here uh, and everywhere, to be quite honest, uh, we'll be able to tell immediately uh, huh. rather than waiting a month for our crews to go around and actually lift the lid and look at the dial spinning. We'll be able to tell within a day. So when so with the older brass fittings, mm -hmm. talk about the like how that fails and, and does it does it. Uh, potentially mark and tick off that water is being used even if it's not being used? It doesn't. Uh, they don't typically fail that way. Okay. I won't say it never happens, but it, that's not typical. What typically happens is, like with anything mechanical, the parts wear and the tolerances become wider over time and it doesn't, it makes the reads less accurate, but it's usually less accurate on the low side. Uh -huh. What uh, this new what these new meters will provide is an accurate accounting uh, at all times, and uh, folks will be able to check on our website in real time how much water they're using. So if they uh, if they have a leak, they'll be able to tell immediately, and so will we, and we'll be proactive in reaching out to those folks that we where we identify a problem. Some other tech upgrades, I understand. Park management? Park management. Uh, all asset management is, uh, is getting an upgrade right now. We have uh, maps, hand-drawn maps of where you know, uh, water meters are, where valves are, those kind of things. With the asset management program, all of that will be online. So there's no, well, not no, there's less concern of a loss of institutional knowledge. Uh -huh. If you have a 30-year employee that, uh, that retires, takes a lot of knowledge with them yeah. and trying to, or her, and trying to recreate that is difficult at best. With this online system, uh, we'll be able to track uh, progress. We'll be able to know when certain parts are expected to fail or need maintenance. Um, so we'll be able to be proactive about addressing those issues before they happen to us. The other uh, big news over the last few weeks was uh, the announcement of the retirement of Police Chief Moody at the end of this year. And I know the searches are ongoing. How's that coming? Going very well. We're going to miss uh, Chief Moody a lot, um, but we're very happy for him and his family. Uh, 33 years, and uh, that's quite a bit of time. And uh, he'll still be a part of the community, although traveling a lot more. Yeah. The search is going great. Uh, so far, we have uh, 12 qualified applicants um, from all over the country. We have applicants from here in Washington. Uh, we have uh, applicants from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, from Chicago, uh, some from California, uh, Nevada, uh, a couple other places. But it's uh, a nationwide search, and we'll be sure to find the best candidate. And we want to make sure the public is uh, invited to participate in that, too. So even with COVID and everything else that's going on where we can't gather for a traditional community open house like you'd see uh, typically, uh, we're going to try something new and a little bit innovative uh, to try to get the public involved as much as possible. And how much um, input or just conversations would is Chief Moody expected to have as the transition 
progresses. So uh, what uh, Chief Moody and I talked about was uh, when you retire or when you decide to retire, please give me at least six months. And I was very thankful that he uh, that he did that. So our idea plan at the moment is that he will participate in the selection process and he will have probably two weeks, um, roughly, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less to make those personal introductions uh, for our new police chief to the community, uh, to uh, various stakeholders within that uh, that profession. Focus on Shelton this week and every week is brought to you by our community credit union. And right now, it's city manager Jeff Knighton. Thanks for coming on. Thank you very much for having me. From the iFiber One News Radio Studios, you're listening to Daybreak. Well, good morning, everybody. Jeff Slakey and Spencer Hughes here on the Daybreak Show. And as we continue our conversations about a big event that's upcoming this Saturday, the Bikers for Babies, it is uh, another great conversation as we're getting ready. This time we'll have Shannon on again, the Director of Patient Access and a big Indian motorcycle enthusiast. This time... Shannon's got her husband, Eric, on the line with us as well, president of the Indian Motorcycle Riders Group 2047, based in Bremerton as well. Jen Capps still with us. Eric, uh, good to see you here this morning, and Shannon, good to see you again. Hey, great to see you and everybody. So let's talk a little bit about this, Eric. Shannon and I uh, talked yesterday about it, but um, where did this come from and being the president of the of the motorcycle riders club 2047 uh you must be a big fan of just riding in general well i had all started i've always been a motorcycle enthusiast riding motorcycles for years and years and uh after moving up here to this great state of washington uh i kind of got a turn on to the indian motorcycle brand went out looked at it along with my wife shannon and just totally fell in love with the brand and we ended up coming home with uh two indian motorcycles and wow. uh, the dealerships they have uh chapters at all the dealerships where the like-minded and co-owners of the indian motorcycles can come together and uh and and converse and have a good time and uh, along with that as we were trying to slowly get our chapter up and running uh, with uh, the new owners and people who'd be interested. I kind of partnership with the chapter, the Indian chapter that's located in Auburn. They had been established for several years and they had a fundraiser. Uh, it was last year and it was called the, the Wigged Out Ride. And what it was, it was a fundraiser to raise money to purchase uh, wigs and, and hair extensions for the survivors of cancer and for the who were going through cancer treatment. And I just thought that was really something good that they were doing as their organization giving back to the community. So once our chapter finally started getting personnel and everything up, we, we want to do something for the community because we're not just a bike organization or bike group where we just meet and we just go out and we and we ride our bikes we're a community-based uh organization mm -hmm. and from all walks of lives we have school bus drivers retirees active duty military ministers law enforcement so it's a very broad overreach of the community and it was important for us as a chapter to give back to the community that we enjoy writing in. And Shannon had actually came up with the idea of doing a fundraiser for, for the hospital. And it actually came out that the, uh, the neonatal section was in need of equipment. And I'm like, what better fundraiser to have to give back to the community, to give back to the hospital, especially during the recent times in which they've, you know, everybody's taken a hit. And this is just us, the motorcycle enthusiasts. And with this fundraiser, it's just not Indians. We don't care what you ride, as long as you ride a motorcycle through the community so we can come together and finally give back. Cost is $20 for individuals, $30 for a couple with two riders mm -hmm. on a bike. So the question now is, what are you guys doing? Are you guys gonna ride separately or ride together? Absolutely, separately. <laughs> <laughs> she was like quick with that Robert, that was definitely, definitely, definitely that was a quick answer there jen tell me a little bit about this partnership this is great for mason 
Well, it is really heartwarming to see how our community is pulled together. I mean, Shannon brought this brilliant idea to the table. Eric being the leader of the writers group has really embraced it. And it's a true partnership between, you know, our staff members who are empowered to bring these kind of ideas forward, which we totally love. Um, and, you know, the writers group, you know, they have been really generous with us and just wonderful to work with. And what's really exciting is that our golf committee, Coach Jack Stark, that we're going to talk to at some point, has been the chair of the golf committee. And he was so disappointed that we weren't able to have the tournament because of everything that's going on with the pandemic. And this opportunity came about to support the birth center here at Mason Health and at the hospital to also fold in the steering committee from the golf committee and some of their sponsors to help fund the total $37,000 fund an item that we have for several pieces of equipment in addition addition to the fetal telemetry unit that the Bikers for Babies group is going to fund. So it's a true community partnership collaboration. It's really in alignment with our mission, you know, here at Mason General, United Community Empowered People, Exceptional Health. It just hits on all three and it's just, it's going to be magic. I'm really looking forward to it. So Shannon, again, it's coming up on Saturday. It's going to start at nine and the ride goes until two. The start and end location again is the Bremerton Motorsports Park on Old Clifton Road in Port Orchard. Uh, so again, tell me a little bit about um, the ride and if it starts at nine, what time would you encourage everybody to start gathering there at the motorsports park? Our kickstand up, I believe, was set for 10 a.m. I think we listed nine, so it allowed us to get people together. We, we stage and we want to make sure that we, you know, provide good distancing for everybody before we begin. Yeah. Um, and depending on number of riders, you know, they may have different start times. We're going to try to, to pace that a little bit, but um we expect it to, to just be a good constant flow of bikes coming through the community. It'll be a beautiful ride. And right now the weather looks like it might be pretty good. So yeah, I'm just kind of taking a look, <laughs> taking a look to see what the next couple of days holds. And uh, yeah, it could be a real nice one here coming up. Yeah, we'll see. Keep our fingers crossed for sure. <laughs> Very cool. As we go to the website, masongeneral.com, you see it, scroll through right on those main graphics, Bikers for Babies. Click on that link and you'll learn more about this inaugural event uh, that is going to be a, a huge uh, impact to our community and to the Mason Health Birth Center and more. It's presented with Indian Motorcycle of Bremerton, Indian Motorcycle Riders Group 2047 and Brothers Power Sports. It's all helping out uh, Mason General Hospital and Mason Health through the foundation and it's going to be a, a fun time coming up this Saturday. Uh, start making your way there nine, hitting the road by 10 and it'll uh, take a nice tour through the county. Uh, Shannon, Eric, uh, good to see you. Good to talk with you, Jen. As always, it's good to talk with you. And <laughs> yeah, we'll continue to uh, make yes, sure folks are ready. For I, I want to give a quick shout out to my road captain, Kevin Taylor, who yes, is really yes. behind the scenes. He's been working extremely hard for this. Uh, Abel Eaton, who's our uh, brand specialist at Indian of Bremerton, and especially Brothers Power Sports, because, you know, without them and the use of their uh, property and facilities, none of this would have been able to, to take place. So really a lot of good kudos to them. Very cool. And Thank to you my for wife, that. Shannon and Jen, they've been awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Eric, Shannon, Jen, nice to talk with you again, and really look forward to a fun weekend this weekend. Wonderful. Thank you. We're All looking right. forward to it. Look forward to seeing everybody there. Thank you so much for listening to today's Daybreak with Jeff Slakey podcast. Again, I'm so happy and honored you found us and chose to listen. Please subscribe, rate, review, and share this with your circle of influence. It's a collection of some of the interviews, news, and conversation during Daybreak with Jeff Slakey on iFiber One News Radio KMAS weekdays from 6 to 9. Thank you so much again and talk with you next time.